everyone. In this video, I thought that I would continue to work on these two paper bag projects. And I was going to implement um, in them some die cuts using In Love Arts dies that they sent me. And I'm just going to show you really quick all of the beautiful dies that they sent me. I did pay for some of these, and some of them I've already shown you. I ended up purchasing a set for my mom. Like these first ones, I had to get another set because these are just wonderful. Um, you can make all sorts of different shaped tags, and so these are just so much fun to incorporate inside your journal, or even if you wanted to do sentiments for cards or uh, add some sort of embellish embellishment to your tags. These are just uh, really wonderful um, dies to have in your collection. So yeah, I had to purchase another set of these. <laughs> and you get quite a few. And I noticed that, um, you know, the pricing on some of these are, are just really, really uh, amazing. They're very affordable. And I did like that some of them are even made in the USA. And then I have this envelope one that I thought I would try. And there's this teapot frame, which I thought would be perfect for Alice in Wonderland or the, um, I did another tea themed collection and I thought that would go good with that. And then you can never have enough frames. So I thought I would try this frame. And I loved this. It, you know, it's just kind of like a frame sign type die. And I just, yeah, had to try this one. And then coffee. And I'm excited to use this with the coffee shaped gel press plate that I showed in my previous video. And then this one is a couple, uh, just a few frames and I thought I would kind of play with it and see um, it looks like it has the smaller one that you could create a little window with and I loved this one this one I just thought was really pretty kind of reminds me of a doily shaped, shaped like frame and then loved this one too with the key and the lock I'll probably use this one in the project that I will be doing following uh, you know, by showing you these dies. And then this one I purchased again because, you know, it's a envelope or a pocket envelope with a tag and I use those all the time. And then this one I thought would make a really cool pocket and then just have that left uh, edge kind of sticking out of a journal or something. And then another pocket envelope, which I just, I love these because you can always insert tags in them and they're just wonderful to have. And then another pocket <laughs> with a corner. And so, yeah, I'm really excited to try these. And I probably will use these in the next video when I get going into decorating pages and so forth. Okay, so I have my two paper bag projects here. I'm still working on the digital collection for the one on the left. And I'm just finishing up the collection, so it will be launching within the next few days. And I will, again, I'll have the newsletter announcing that uh, with the promo code and all of that. So I'm going to be working with this paper bag with the gentleman on it. And I did a previous video showing how I did the cover. Uh, I, I don't know, I think I got mixed reactions from everybody as far as when I used the gel press plates and I understand that, you know, mixed media type back backgrounds may not be what everybody loves, but you know, you can always, I, I just like to show these things so when I finish a project, people aren't going, well, how did you do the cover? So I like to show my entire process and then just kind of leave it to you to create it to how you like it and your style and so forth. So what I decided to do is I took my paper bag and I cut right down the center there. And I decided to turn this into a journal. And this is how things evolve when, I mean, I 
only had this intent of creating a background with this paper bag and then I was going to use it, you know, I thought in a journal or something. And see, this is how things kind of evolve when I start creating. And now it's going to turn into a journal. And I thought that this paper bag would make the perfect template for my cover, spine, and back cover. And so now what I'm doing is I'm cutting the bottom section of my paper bag. And now you can see kind of where I'd have a front cover, the middle section would be the spine, and then I have my back cover. Now, the very bottom of the bag, I decided to create a flap. I'm not sure at this point how I'm going to incorporate it. I might end up just cutting it off, but I like to leave my options open. So I decided to just kind of leave that flap as it is. Now I'm going to take some muslin and that's going to be what's going to create the durability and uh, you know make it so it's a more substantial type journal and it won't get ripped apart you know just being a paper bag so the one thing I loved about muslin is it just kind of is neutral and you can stamp on it if you want to there's it, it just leaves you so many options on how you might want to decorate it and that's why i chose muslin but you could show you know you could choose a upholstery fabric or something that's more heavy duty but i really the other thing i liked is when I have the muslin with the paper bag, it, it has a really neat texture to it. And I kind of like that crinkle sound. So yeah, that, that was one of the reasons why I chose to go with the muslin. And now I'm just kind of cutting everything and shaping it around my paper bag. Now I decided that for the spine, I, I wanted it to be mainly a soft front and back cover, but I thought the spine should be more durable so I decided to take some medium weight chipboard and I just uh, took and measured my spine which was three inches wide and then did half of that so I'm cutting at 1.5 inches width and then the height of my paper bag and then I'm going to glue the chipboard down to the middle section of my spine there or of what's going to be my spine now I did want to make sure that I applied quite a bit of glue to the chipboard just to make sure that everything would hold in place nicely and then I'm going to just take and where that muslin is at the bottom I cut around that flap and I'm just going to bring that little piece up over that section of chipboard there and then I'm going to take and cut the other side just so again I, I'm thinking I'm going to use this flap somehow some way but I'm not sure yet I thought that it might be a really cool innovative way to somehow uh, hold uh, some section of the journal together <laughs> you know I don't know I just, like I said, I, I thought that it might get cut off, um, but knowing me, I'm going to come up with some sort of, I'm hoping, creative way to, to use that flap there. And then I'm just going to take and bring down that top section of my muslin over the top section of that paper bag there. Now, you can do it differently. You could measure your muslin differently so it covers that entire section there. I just kind of had this piece already cut that I thought I would work from. And so, yeah, I, I'm going to be taking another piece of muslin to lay over um, that inside section to finish it up so it all looks, you know, nice. And then I'm just taking that one flap there and bringing it to kind of even that out. The paper bag had that uh, kind of diagonal slit in it from when I took the bag apart. So I wanted to make sure to even all that out. And I'm just figuring out 
how big I want to make this journal. I decided that I was going to use the flaps of the paper bag so I could make my journal wider and you'll be able to see that better as I get further along in this project. I also decided to help create more durability to that flap because you know it's just the flap of the paper bag. I would add some of this heavier duty trim to kind of decorate the flap and at the same time create that extra durability that it needs. But before I glue that down, I'm going to stitch that piece of muslin down onto the paper bag as you can see there. So I've already went ahead and stitched that down. And I'm just going to cut everything. I, I just cut a little slit and then I decided to rip the muslin because I really like that kind of distressed edge there. And now I have this extra piece kind of, it, it's a little too wide, so I'm going to just glue that little uh, section of muslin in just a little bit, just to shorten the width of the cover of my journal. Now I'm going to take and apply that trim just to help create a little more durability with where the flap of the lunch bag was. The cover section there where I did the, the guy and, and the gel press and, and the paint and all of that, that has uh, created more durability to that section of the lunch bag. So I wanted to make sure that there is enough strength and durability with the, the flap section of the paper bag by adding this trim or you could do, uh, you know, again, you could just add some durable fabric, whatever you like. This is just to give you some ideas on how to <laughs> take a paper bag and turn it into a journal. And it's the first one I've done this way. So, you know, with each one you do, you usually can find ways to revise it and make it better. And again, when I first started this project, it was just a paper bag and I was just going to create a background and then I just kept adding to it and adding to it and now it's going to be a journal and this is you know sometimes how things evolve and I hope you all enjoy seeing my creative process on how I take something and where it will start to the finished uh, finished work Okay, so now you might be able to see better how this is starting to look more and more like a journal. And now I'm going to work on the inside section of the covers. And what I'm doing is just measuring to find out what piece of muslin I want to cut to cover that intersection there. Okay, so now I'm just marking everything just to make sure I have everything to where it's going to fit nicely on that intersection. And then I'm just going to make a little cut and then again, rip it because I want that distressed bottom edge there. I want those strings kind of hanging down. I don't want a nice clean cut. So I'm just going to rip it. That's the other thing I love about working with muslin is it's so easy to just rip the fabric and uh, it'll usually rip pretty straight. And now I have the intersection of my journal. So now I'm just going to take and stitch along that left edge there. Okay, so you can see where I stitched it. Now, as far as the top part, I'm not sure if I wanna glue that down. I think I'm going to go with that binding that I showed in a few videos ago with the, the muslin binding, and I might go with that. But again, at this point, I just kinda of wanna leave things open. 
uh, until I know for sure what my final plan of action is going to be. So now what I'm doing is I'm just selecting a variety of different papers that I have on hand. I decided that I wanted to make this more of an art journal, so I am going to include some canvas papers. And then I have just like a file folder, inner office, department envelope. This is some sketch paper from a, one of those larger sketch pads that you can get at Michael's. And then craft paper. Um, I have some tea stained paper. Here's another sketchbook page. And, and again, it's from those large sketch pads that they have. And then I had this old paper that I found at the thrift store. I don't know what it is. It might be like typing paper. And then I had some Bristol paper, again, from a larger Bristol pad. And so I'm just going to take a variety of these papers and start building my signature. So what I'm doing is I am going to measure the width of my cover and then I'm going to double that width. So it's seven and a half, so I'm going to make my pages 15 inches wide so I can create that, that booklet. And this will be my base signature page and this is the canvas paper that I was referring to. Because I, I thought this would be kind of fun. I might keep this for myself or I might do something. I might give it to my brother. He's currently serving his, I think it's his fifth tour. So he's uh, right now over, I think it's in Iraq somewhere. And I'm not sure. I, I think that's where he was sent, but I know he's in the Middle East somewhere. <laughs> anyway, I thought this might be something that he might kind of like and he can, he can uh, might send it to him and he can journal in it and something, you know, something kind of special. So this is something, you know, things like these that can, can be uh, made into gifts that are very sentimental and treasured. Okay, so I'm just I'm cutting that canvas paper and I'll go ahead and I will show you this canvas paper I got, I think it was at Michael's, and I think it was 14 inches by 18 inches. It's a really large canvas pad and I really haven't used it much. I don't even think I've tried painting on it, but it already came primed, so I thought it would be fun to do some sort of artwork on it. Here's that canvas pad that I was talking about. So it is 14 inches by 18 inches. Okay, so what I'm doing now is I'm just taking all those papers that I had shown and I'm going to size them to my base signature page, which was the canvas paper. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn on some music and let you kind of follow along and then I'll be back. Reboot, I'm cold red, my service automated Like data running through my veins Got you distracted, subconscious overloaded Careful, don't pull the cord on me
Okay, so basically all I did while the music was playing is I just took those various papers, an inner department office envelope and some file folders and the canvas paper and started to put my signatures together in a way I thought I would want them. And I am going to go back through in more detail to show you how I'm building those signature pages. And the other thing that I did is I did take and cut everything down to size around my journal cover here. Now what I'm doing is I'm taking some scrap pieces of trim that I have and just to give that edge more of a finished look, I'm just taking those scrap pieces and gluing them down onto the edge of my cover there. The other thing I wanted to do really quick before I forgot was apply a layer of my white glue over that book page area because it was really fragile and it was tearing a little bit and to prevent that from tearing the white glue will provide a coating that will make it durable and prevent it from tearing in the future. And I might apply a coat of matte medium or decoupage over this just again to make sure that it has a durable finish on it. And the white glue will dry clear so when this dries you know it's just gonna have kind of maybe a little bit of a sheen but again it will prevent it from tearing. And I'm really loving the way this is turning out so far. I thought that Maybe to add just one extra thing on that book page there, I'd, I'd add in a button. And I think that just kind of ties it all together a little better. And I did pull up where it says embrace the journey. I did pull that up and put in a little piece of that burlap trim. Again, just to kind of tie everything together. And now I'm just taking more of that uh, trim that has those metal embellishments on it and uh, placing those on the corners of that left side there. Just to give it, you know, just those added details to give it more of a finished look. Okay, so now I'm going to go back to those signature pages and just kind of look through each signature and see how I want to start attaching everything together. So if you noticed, I took and I folded a lot of pages right at the edge or some, you know, just different folds. And I didn't really measure anything. I just kind of eyeballed everything. And then I have this notebook paper. I thought that I would take and kind of do a sideways waterfall with it, just so it would provide a lot of space for for journaling and uh, just a more interactive effect. So I'm going to just take and apply a very thin layer of glue right on the very edge of each one of those three pieces of lined papers. And when I'm doing this I want to be careful that I don't get glue up onto that craft paper there. I just want to make sure that I'm gluing it down to that white paper that I folded. And this just creates a hinge for these three pieces of paper to rest on. And again, just some sort of way to make it more interactive, I guess you could say. Okay, so I have them all glued down and now you can see they kind of all open like a book on my one page there. I love doing things that are kind of really different. <laughs> I I don't know, I just like to constantly push that, you know, thinking out of the box and really challenging myself to do different things. And I think once I start decorating everything and I start doing my stamp work and, you know, you'll be able to see all of this come to life a little bit more. Okay, so I have that little hinge there that I created on my craft paper when I folded it. And I just want to apply glue to just that hinged folded section. And I'm going to glue it down onto that piece of white paper there. 
just as a way to kind of connect those two pieces together. And I'm going to do this with the rest of the pages contained in the signature. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some music back on, let you all follow along because everything that I do is pretty self-explanatory, but I will go over it, so I hope you enjoy. So now that I have all my pages glued and again I did that to make it so my pages would be wider for the size of the journal that I'm doing so that's why I created those hinges and glued pieces of paper together. Now I'm going to punch some holes and I'm just kind of eyeballing it. I'm going in about two and a half inches from the top and bottom maybe more like two inches and then I'm just kind of eyeballing where the center is And then I want to make sure that I pull my flap down because I do not want a hole going through my flap. And then I'm going to go up about two inches again 
and punch another hole. Then I'm going to go back to the top and where I have that first hole, I'm going to go down about half an inch and punch another hole. So I'll have two holes close to one another and then I'm going to take some twine and thread it through each set of those holes and then just tie a simple knot and I will have my signature bound together. And then again, I plan on taking and attaching my signatures to the spine or the cover of my journal with uh, some muslin using that new muslin binding technique that I did in uh, my previous video. So as you can see, I'm just threading that twine through the holes. And then once I have both ends up through the hole, I'm just tying a simple knot and then just cutting off the extra. And I just do this for the remaining two sets of holes that I have there. And then it will all be, my signature will all be bound together. And I'll just do a nice little flip through here for you so you can kind of see how I put everything together. And I did include a paper bag. So if there's anything like envelopes or anything that you might want to put in your signature, you would want to add those in. But I think with the type of binding that I'm doing, I'll still be able to add those in regardless. It's just kind of nice sometimes to have things stitched together, I think, especially your papers. <laughs> and again, I got that extra width by creating that hinge when I folded one of the papers and then just glued another piece of paper to that hinge. And then I get the extra width that I need for my journal. Okay, so there's my one signature. And again, I just repeat this for my other two signatures. And one, I use the inner office department envelope, or is it inner department office envelope? Inner office department? Inner department office. <laughs> you guys know what I mean. I use that as one of the base pages for my uh, signature. So now I'm just taking the other scraps of trim that I have to finish off that edge of my cover. And then I am going to call this video done for today. And then I will be back with part two where I go into binding everything together. And then I'll probably bring out some of those In Love Arts dies and create some die cuts and start embellishing and decorating my pages. And I do plan on doing some art journal pages, so it should be fun. I'm going to have a nice mixture of things. Okay, so I think my cover is now officially done. I loved how the scraps of trim there on the side worked together. Um, really love how that looks and it's a great way to use your scraps of trim. So yeah, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Uh, again, I plan on doing part two and getting down into the embellishing and uh, binding it all together. So I hope to catch you guys back for part two. Would love to hear any comments that you might have on this paper bag journal. And let me know how you are enjoying the videos. Uh, your comments and support is what keeps me coming back to do these videos. Truly. Uh, these take a lot of time to do. And, you know, I love doing it. It's really nice as I was saying to get back in the studio and be able to just spend some time creating and at the same time being able to share it with you. However, it takes the additional time to go through and edit the videos and upload them. So I really love to hear your comments on how you're liking the videos. And if you like me doing uh, more frequent videos like I've been doing this past week. So I'll keep them coming. Just let me know. Uh, Thank you all for watching. I hope you all have an amazing weekend and thank you so much.